Hey, Brian Smith. Pam Landry. It's episode 10. Episode 10. And summer is not winding down. No, it's not. I can't believe I just said that out loud. (laughs) Episode 10 of our podcast, not a podcast. How do you get in touch with us? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Um, The Gmail address is icecreamsodact at gmail.com. Please send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. What do you got? I'm shaking the computer. Look at it. We just got an email. Oh, wow. Dear Brian and Pam or Pam and Brian. Let's say dear dear Pam. Oh, it's it's looking for advice. So that makes it my fault, right? Yes. My daughter's third generation American-born fiancé... Okay. Wants to wear a kilt to the oh, wedding. Okay. His late grandmother was born in Scotland. Mm-hmm. He claims French and Romanian roots, but my daughter would prefer he wear a formal suit or even a tuxedo to their evening wedding ceremony. Uh oh. What do we do? Signed to kilt or not to kilt. <laughs> that is the answer. Actually, this was a dear Abby, not a dear. Pam and Brian. Oh, good. All, All right. right. I got worried. Cause... All right. So, so, so he wants to wear a kilt to the, not just the wedding, but to the reception as well. What would you say? Well, first of all, I, I, I sense a problem, Brian Smith, and the fact that the bride-to-be is the one that's not happy about this. Oh, mom. Trouble in paradise yes. already. Yes. All I right. mean, this should have been discussed. Yeah. Uh, but, you know what my feeling is? If the groom-to-be has good legs... <laughs> well, you know, it surprised me because I thought that dear Abby and now dear Pam would be saying, well, talk to the gentleman and tell him this is America and put on a pair of pants. No. No. Uh, dear Abby writes back, dear kilt or not to kilt. I'm glad you asked. Your daughter should lighten up. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> okay. Allow. And then she puts it in parentheses like, you know, go ahead. Allow her fiance to wear whatever he wants to the wedding. Respect his reasons. Look at it this way. It'll make for a memorable wedding. Yeah, it will, and a, and, and a good way to start your marriage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Brian, so to reiterate, big word, <laughs> our email address, and don't don't write to ask about what to wear to the wedding and whatnot, icecreamsodact <laughs> at gmail.com. And the place where our broadcast lives is on YouTube for now. And that's all one word, ice cream soda CT. You put it all into the search box, hit that little magnifying glass, and you find our channel. On YouTube, and it's free. It it is free, yes. Even the advice is free. So subscribe and spread the word. You know, on second thought, you can email us, but don't ask us for any real advice. We we, we don't want to get sued. All right, something that we can talk about without there being much controversy, Brian, is the weather. Oh, that, yes. (laughs) Hot weather. Yeah, for the most part, we're looking at a mix of sun and clouds with highs in the 80s this week. Humid, but... The weekend is going to be... Much better. Yes. Friday into the weekend, uh, the weather people are saying humidity is dropping, and the temperatures will be topping out in the upper 70s. So, Brian, you are probably wondering who our special guests are going to be on uh, episode 10. I wish I knew. I should listen. I'll tell you. First of all, we have Rich DiCarlo. Rich DiCarlo is the events coordinator for the city of Ansonia, and he's got something big coming up this weekend. Also, we're going to hear from Yet Auger, president of the Cheshire Chamber of Commerce, about the big fall festival coming up. And special, special, special guest on episode 10. (laughs) A former colleague of ours. Did I mention it's a special guest? Yeah. Did we mention that? Ray Andrewson making a special, special appearance. I know him. Good. It'll be good to hear from Ray. Indeed. Brian Smith, it's time for Celebrity Birthdays. Oh, my favorite part where I win a lot of money. Is there money involved? Uh, no. Oh, I'll guess any. I'll guess a few of them. How's that? Okay, celebrities born this week include James Corden. How old? He's the guy who hosts the show after Stephen Colbert on CBS? Yeah, he does carpool karaoke. Funny guy. Oh, I don't know how old he is. He could be any age. He's one of those guys that could be 30. He could be 60. 41. 41. I was right. Another funny guy, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. He's got to be uh, close to, I'd say, 50. 46. Younger than I thought. Al Roker. Al Roker, weatherman for NBC. And may I just say this? Al, put some weight back on. <laughs> A shadow of his former self. I liked heavier Al. It scares me. When people lose too much weight, it scares me. Well, he's 65, Brian. He's 65. 
Also 65 this week, Elvis Costello. Can I do a few? Yes. Rob Halford, lead singer from Judas Priest, 68 years old. That was my Judas Priest impression. It sounded just like Judas Priest. I actually interviewed him a few years back. What a nice guy. And really? just very laid back, yeah. very quiet. <laughs> you never know. So he, he he kind of becomes an extrovert when he's in front of the band. Yep, he does. <laughs> Another guy that um, I had the pleasure of interviewing a few years back, Gene Simmons has a birthday this week. Brian, how old is Gene Simmons from KISS? I don't know, but you interviewed Gene Simmons from KISS? Yes, and Paul Stanley. No kidding. I don't know. How old is he? 70. 70. Rick Springfield turns 70. Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. 71. Connie Chung, who's married to Maury Povich. Connie Chung, former newswoman for CBS, turns 73. Former President Bill Clinton, also 73 this week. Lead singer for Deep Purple in the Richie Blackmore years, Ian Gillen, turns 74. Actress Jill St. John, 79. Johnny Nash, also turns 79 years old this week. Brian. <laughs> Ginger Baker, the drummer from Cream. Crazy Ginger? Very crazy. <laughs> Ginger if, Baker, how old is he? If you haven't already, check out the documentary about Ginger Baker. It's epic. He is 80 this week. The Gambler, Kenny Rogers. When I saw this, I couldn't believe it. He turns 81 years old. And he is retiring from performing, as he should do at 81, and enjoy the rest of his life. And this next one... Just, I, I, I couldn't believe this next one. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. Bewitched? Is that the wrong theme song? <laughs> Adam's Family? No, you're right. Oh, okay. No, From I Dream, I of, dream Jeannie. of Jeannie. I Dream of Jeannie. I Dream of Jeannie. Jeannie. Barbara, Barbara Eden. Eden. 88 this week. Oh, that's incredible. And she's outlived probably the rest of that uh, cast from that show. Must be the magic in the bottle. And now with a blink, it's time for This Week in Music. Dee -dee, dee -dee. Oh, no. 1964 <laughs> this week, the Supremes, Brian, had the number one song with... Uh, with, um, I don't know. Baby, baby. Oh. Where did our love Where did go? Where did our love go? In 1966, on their final tour of America, the Beatles performed at Shea Stadium in New York City. Unlike the previous year's performance, which had sold out, there were 11,000 empty seats in Shea Stadium. The Beatles earned more than they had the year before. How much did they earn? $189,000. Wow. There were empty <laughs> seats. Can you believe it? I can't no. believe there were empty seats for a Beatles show. Insane. Also, in 1967, the Beatles had their 14th number one hit with All You Need Is Love. And this week in 1968, the final episode of the Monkees TV show aired on NBC. In 1969, this week in music history, the Rolling Stones went to number one with Honky Tonk Women. And Brian, in 1970, Bread had the number one song, Make It With You. In 1970, Creedence Clearwater Revival started their nine-week run at number one with the album Cosmos Factory. And in 1975... Bruce Springsteen's third album, Born to Run, was released. I remember this in 1979, even though it was before any of us were born. <laughs> do, 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 do. The Knack hit number one with My Sharona. And in 1985, Huey Lewis, The Power of Love. That came from that movie, Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. That was number one. And back in 1988 and this week, Steve Winwood hit number one with the album and the single, both titled Roll With It. What a chart hog. Chart hog? <laughs> he had the number one album and single. That's a chart hog. That's a chart hog. Hey. All right, some other stuff this week in history, Brian. The year 79, not what 1979, not 1879, the year 79. Mount Vesuvius erupted and destroyed the southern Italy city of Pompeii. In 1902, pioneering cookbook author Fanny Farmer, who changed the way that we Americans prepared food by using standardized measurements and recipes. Anyway, Miss Farmer's School of Cookery opened up in Boston in 1902. In 1909, the first race was held at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And Brian, this week in 1920, seven men, including legendary all-around athlete and football star Jim Thorpe, they got together, organized a professional football league at Canton, Ohio, and the meeting led to the creation of... The American Professional Football Conference, the forerunner to the NFL. 
1959, this week in history, Hawaii becomes the 50th state. And in 1989, this week in history, Nolan Ryan of the Texas Rangers became the first pitcher in Major League history to register 5,000 career strikeouts. Brian, you and I are both Mets fans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this trade didn't really go over all that big. Jim Fregosi. That's who the Mets got for Nolan Ryan? In 1971. How would yep. you like to be Jim Fergosi? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, Jim Fergosi, how you doing? Yeah, get out of my sight. Wonder how well that jersey sold. <laughs> uh, and Brian, one more thing. Also this week in 1989, baseball-related, Pete Rose got banished from baseball for gambling on games. It was that long? 30 years? Yep. Wow. 30 years. And now, Pam Landry, let's go to our local desk. Do we have a local desk? Uh, we do. It's right here. All right. And let's talk about some of the music and some of the events that are happening around our area. There's something big going on in Ansonia this weekend. One of the best Aerosmith tribute bands in the country will be in Ansonia this Saturday. The events coordinator for the city of Ansonia, Mr. Rich DiCarlo, has more on Rocking the Valley. Hi, Brian. Hi, Pam. This is Rich DiCarlo from Ansonia's Rock the Valley. We want folks to come up and see us on Saturday, August 24th, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. for the event of the summer. This year, we have something for everyone, a kid's zone, petting zoo, beer garden, and fireworks. And if that wasn't enough, we have a musical lineup that is second to none, featuring the Army 102nd Airborne Band, Ripcord, the 1980s metal band, XYZ, Revisited, Senator George Logan's Electric Lady Band, and headlining is the world's premier Aerosmith tribute band, Draw the Line. Celtic magician Daniel Green will perform and be our MC for the evening. It all happens at Nolan Field, 350 Wakeley Avenue, and Sonia, exit 19, north and south on Route 8, this Saturday, August 24th, from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. See you there. Thank you, Rich DiCarlo. Rich is the events coordinator for the city of Ansonia. And that Aerosmith tribute band is, is one of the best I've heard. Also, we have a Crosby, Stills, and Nash tribute band coming up as we go down our local music. Uh, I should mention, Brian, music under the stars in North Haven, North Haven Town Green. It is winding down for the summer season. Uh, Tuesday the 20th, it's Last Licks, and the final show will be Tuesday, August 27th, prime time, 7 o'clock, North Haven Town Green. I may be wrong. You didn't just mention summer is winding down, did you? I did not. Okay, good, because I, I, I would have really been upset if I had heard that. <laughs> I thought there's something uh, music going on in East Haven. Sunday concerts on the green, uh, 6 o'clock Sunday night is Neapolitan night. It sounds good. It sounds like food. I know. All right. And then our Crosby, Stills, and Nash tribute band in Guilford. Yeah, CSN Songs, the name of the band, and that is Saturday night on the Guilford Green, 6.30. It is free. And, Brian, what's going on at the casinos this week? Well, out in casino land, Pam Landry, where should we start? Mohegan Sun? Let's do that. Free show this Sunday, August 25th. Do you remember the band Savoy Brown? I do. They're going to be at the Mohegan Sun in the Wolf Den for free on Sunday. And on Thursday, August 28th, Ambrosia will be at the Wolf Den for free. Those are a couple of flashbacks for you. Mm -hmm. if, you want, if you want to pay for some tickets, in the Mohegan Sun Arena on Wednesday, August 21st, it's the Jonas Brothers. Thursday, August 22nd, it's Nickelback. And Saturday, August 24th, it's Daughtry. I think I'll save my money. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pam, what's happening at Foxwoods? Uh, Friday the 23rd, Squeeze. I love that band. Saturday the 24th, comedian Ron White. And Sunday the 25th, Lenny Kravitz. And at the Oakdale Theater on Friday, August 23rd, it's Australian Pink Floyd. And some other stuff of local note. We have the Elm Shakespeare Company's 24th edition of Shakespeare in the Park at Edgerton Park in New Haven. And that continues from Tuesdays through Sundays till the 1st of September. Uh, gates open at 8, and this time the play is The Comedy of Errors. A lot of farmer's markets happening around our area this week. Thursday night, it's the farmer's market at Walnut Beach in Milford. And Saturday morning... It's, it's the Farmer's Market in Milford. It's downtown Milford for that one. Hampton has one on Thursday. Right, uh, through the 3rd of October from 4 till 7.30 at Town Center Park. Also in Hampton, their free outdoor movies continue. Well, Brian, one more time. Friday the 23rd, the movie is The Sandlot. That's a summer movie. And that's because it's summer. 
forever, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on Saturday night, one of my favorite names for a historical house anywhere. There's something going on in New Haven at Morris Cove. Yes, um, Brian, the party Morris house. It's called the party house, but it's not party like no, you've got to fight for your but, right. Yeah. Uh, Lighthouse Road in New Haven. They've got a Morris Cove Day going on Saturday. That is from noon till four. Free admission. Can't beat that. They'll have vendors and, you know, all kinds of crafts and food trucks and kids' activities. And for info, you can go to newhavenmuseum.org. In North Haven on Saturday, there is a, another animal charity, and the fundraiser is a pet adoption. For more on that, I'll go to my colleague, Pam Landry. Woof, woof, meow. Uh, the first annual pet adoption event, Brian, North Haven Green this Saturday, 10 till 2. Pets will be available for adoption from the North Haven Animal Shelter, the East Haven Animal Shelter, and where the love is animal shelter, vendors and food trucks. It's a free event. Now we go to Stratford with another fundraiser there on Saturday. Yeah, in Stratford, it's the Michael Vincent Sage Dragonheart Foundation. They fight against sudden cardiac arrest, and they have their annual fundraiser at Two Roads Brewery in Stratford, Brian. That is Saturday from 2 until 5. Tickets are $50 per person. That's a donation that includes beer and wine, light mm. fare, raffle, and silent auction. You can buy them at the door or at dfibandlive.com. Org. And uh, we have another one going on. This is the Trolley Museum again. The Shoreline Trolley Museum has a lot of great stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And Saturday night, photography night. I love taking pictures. Um, so you can bring your camera equipment. They call it a unique early evening to dusk photographic opportunity to uh, take pictures, Brian, of the trolleys in daylight and twilight. And that is very photogenic. It's, it's a, it's, cool. a, it's, it's a very photogenic place to be there. So that's Saturday night at 6. Admission is 10 bucks, And um, shorelinetrolley.org. Also, Bri, they have their hometown Thursdays going on still. So if you want to get in for free on a Thursday, if you're in a certain town and it's your night, you get in for free. And this Thursday, the 22nd, East Haven, it's your turn. And then on the 29th, it's Hamden and North Haven. That runs from 11 till 4. Free admission at the Shoreline Trolley Museum. You can't beat that. That is my favorite four-letter word that begins with F, by the way. <laughs> uh, oh, and one more thing I've got here, Brian. The 48th Annual Madison Antiques Fair happens Saturday at the Town Green in Madison. That's from 9 till 4. It's uh, Mission 5 Bucks, Kids Under 12, free. Here is a great idea from the city of New Haven. Now through Saturday, the 24th of August, it's New Haven's second annual Cocktail Week. Woohoo! More than three dozen city, three dozen city bars and restaurants and participating venues offer specially designed menus featuring craft cocktails, and they start at $8 a piece, so you know they have to be good. Select locations will also host educational sessions focusing on drinking, spirits, and mixology. If you want more information on New Haven Cocktail Week, go to their website. Guess what it is? NewHavenCocktailWeek.com. All right. I don't know if this is brilliant marketing or just a coincidence, or maybe it's a conspiracy theory, Brian, but you just mentioned it's New Haven Cocktail Week. I did. It's also tax-free week for shopping in Connecticut, so... Go ahead and do some drunk shopping. <laughs> Sample all of those special cocktails and then rev up the charge card. Yeah. Uh, most most clothing and footwear items under $100 tax-free this week. I mean, it's, it's a good thing for back to school, but it just, I don't know, strikes me as so perfect that it's also New Haven cocktail sure, week. Sure, you know what? I'll buy them all. What the heck? <laughs> I'm drunk and I'm not paying tax. Just put it all on the card. That doesn't fit. I don't care. It's tax-free. All right, Brian. We mentioned that Yetta Auger, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, was uh, going to be a guest on today's episode. And as we try to squeeze more fun out of our remaining late summer, there's always a lot of fairs and festivals happening in our area. So Yetta has some information about the Cheshire Fall Festival. Hi, Pam and Brian. This is Yetta from the Cheshire Chamber of Commerce. September 13th and 14th is our Cheshire Fall Festival. The 13th is Food Truck Friday with Cheshire's own Christine Ullman in the house. And Saturday is a great day on the field. 
Uh, we have food vendors, crafters, our business people. Everyone is going to be there. Uh, we get about 5,000 visitors, and I hope everyone out there will be one of our visitors. Food, family fun, and a lot of good times. So please come and join us. Again, that's Friday, September 13th and September 14th. All the information could be found at Cheshire Festival. Yeah, Auger, president of the Cheshire Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Yes, yeah, she's there talking about the fall festival in Cheshire coming up in a couple of weeks. It was last year that I helped host that festival That's right. with our own Maria from WQUN and WQUN's morning show host, Ray Andrewson. Yes, I remember well. And we'll be talking and at least hearing from Ray Andrewson coming up in just a couple of seconds. But first, Pam Landry. Yes, Brian Smith. It's a quick look at This Week in Food. Da, 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 da. This Week in Food. Back on This Week in 1950. <laughs> Could you do that again? This Week in Food. It was on This Week back in 1950, the Hormel Company registered the Spam trademark. Spam, spam, Even though spam, they had first spam, used the word spam, back in 1937, spam, spam, spam. they spam. registered the trademark in 1950. All right, Brian. Um, it's funny you should bring that up because um, if you were anywhere near the news this week, you probably saw this. Um, <laughs> speaking of spam. spam speaking of spam. I'm hungry now, speaking of spam. I'm not. Uh, starting September 23rd, Brian, uh -huh. jumping on the pumpkin spice bandwagon. Oh, no. Spam Pumpkin Spice will be on Walmart and Spam's online stores. And you better act fast because it's limited edition. It's a Walmart exclusive? Walmart and Spam's online me? stores. I kid you not. Uh, there is no pumpkin in this pork. It is mixed with cinnamon, <laughs> clove, allspice, and nutmeg. All things you need in spam. Is that their slogan? There's no pumpkin in this pork? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Brian, spam is giving recommendations on how to consume their spam pumpkin spice. They recommend, among other things, topping waffles with it. Now, see, you think it's crazy. I think that sounds pretty good. I would definitely eat a waffle with, you, you look like you're going to throw up. A little bit. I would eat a waffle with, with pumpkin spice spam. I'm no. not making that up for this for this, uh, for this this show either. No, I don't do spam in any form or fashion. I, they so. should make spam, how about this, pumpkin spice spam donuts. That would be great. Order me a dozen now. I got a good visual on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's probably not a good visual. No, it's not. No. So there you go. Spam, pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice. I yeah. will buy some. Yeah. We can try it right here on this no, broadcast. That's okay. You can have that all to yourself. <laughs> well, we promised it, and now we're going to deliver. Uh, Ray Andrewson, who used to do mornings on our favorite radio station, WQUN. Ray Andrewson checks in with us now with his own audio postcard. Take it away. Hi, Pam. Hi, Brian. This is Ray Andrewson. I've enjoyed uh, hearing you the last several weeks. Uh, we've had a different life, of course, since the closing of WQUN a few weeks back, but it's great to see uh, how you've just moved forward and created this great uh, place to be every week, and I uh, love hearing these podcasts and hearing your voice again. So I look forward to the whole summer and fall and the weeks ahead, learning about what's going on around our area and uh, hearing the two of you. Brian and Pam, always good to be with you. Yes, Ray Andrewson checking in from who knows where. Yeah, it's always good to hear from Ray. It is. Seems like the perfect way to wrap up episode 10, Brian. Oh, what do you mean wrap it up? Uh, it's enough. Or enough of us already. You mean episode 10 is over? Yes. Goodbye!